in Illinois, Scott Heathman, you're up. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. So, so great to see you and, and just listen to this conversation. Um, so one of my side hustles is I love getting my hands involved in humanistic innovation uh, in the St. Louis area. Specifically, I'm working with a great entrepreneur in the food insecurity business right now. And um, he's really come up with some highly innovative ways using existing capacity. So I was interested when you brought up the free spin um thing here where you're essentially taking existing capacity and, and using it for good, hopefully in a lot of other areas and not just for that company. Is is that kind of a trend that we're seeing or is that kind of when uh, resources get constrained, we tend to kind of look for existing capacity to see if we can retool and find new ways to make this, you know, a, a, a broader problem solver, if you will. I don't think people are really looking for it. I, I I think they should. I mean, like your your question is super astute. Um, you know, I, I here in Denmark they have something called Arla. It's all the all the farmers, and they found out at one point that the byproduct of making cheese was to make kind of like this stuff they would throw away and end up becoming protein powder, and obviously becoming like a like a hugely successful byproduct business line. I think the point is less that that is something that is happening now when like finances are tight, it is more something that we should look more at it because there's probably much more of it just hidden in plain sight. And so, uh, I don't know, Jeremy, you see more of these companies than I do. I don't think people are really looking for them. I think people are so obsessed about doing something cool R&D for their existing customers of like something that can make coffee underwater and it sounds great in a brainstorm. And, and often I think some of these very practical things that are solving a real problem is just in front of them. I, I I agree, Henrik, totally. And Scott, I, I do. I agree. It's a great question. I think the challenge is the entrepreneurial mindset is missing. You know, I was talking to a gentleman who runs a family business, one of the largest bottlers of one of the largest beverage companies in the world. And he, I met him at a conference last week, like a CIO conference. And he was telling me about how he said, he goes, do you know how much uh, a pallet of soda weighs? According to our company uh, records, it weighs 2,000 tons. And he said, it's been that way for years. And it doesn't weigh that. And it, it doesn't weigh 2,000 tons. That's crazy. But he said the people whose job it is to input the data never realize that, it's, that, the, that the unit is tons, not pounds. And they always put in 2,000 tons. And our delivery estimates and our load management, all of these systems are built on wrong data. And he said it wasn't until I went in to talk to somebody in the shipping floor and I asked them what they do. That they, He said there's people who every single day correct the wrong data and nobody has ever raised the flag that the data is being entered incorrectly. They're just people who think their job is to correct the mistakes others made rather than fix systematic problems. You know, he said, I was on the line and then I noticed that, yeah, Tom's exactly right. It's always, yeah, I mean, we just, we just are always fixing things, you know. Um, <clears throat> he said, I was on the line and I'm watching, we've got these cameras. He said, cameras used to be on the line because people were afraid that a mouse might crawl into a bottle. And so they're looking for mouses. But he said, you think about all the other data that we could be gathering right now, the only question that camera is answering is mouse. Yes or no. That's it. He's like, you know, we haven't had a mouse in a bottle for like 50 years, but, but no one's ever said, wow, we have this amazing source of data. What else could we be measuring? And he said, it wasn't until like I inherit the family business. And I start looking around and he has that entrepreneurial attitude he's incentivized properly all this stuff right but i think a lot of a lot of folks are they're clocking in they're doing the job they got told they're supposed to do and yeah i got it i'm always correcting manual input errors but like that's what i'm supposed to do and they don't ever they don't ever see bigger opportunities and i think that you know getting back to your question of spare capacity scott I mean, it's just like henrik's example the maersk you know shipping container going back empty nobody it's it's Unless it's somebody's job to actually be identifying those problems and, and turn, treating them like opportunities, then those problems persist because everybody just inherits them. 
And so to me, it gets back to the question of, are there folks with an entrepreneurial mindset who see problems as opportunities, who see workarounds as evidence of an opportunity for innovation, but it's it's a fundamental, it's a different orientation and mindset than I would say the reason most people take kind of a stable, secure job is not because they want to find problems, it's because they need to bring home a paycheck. Yeah, they, it's, right. You know, it's 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 more um there's 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 an asymmetry or a misalignment between kind of a lot of folks' expectations um and desire and the needs that that you're speaking about, Scott. Now thank you both. I appreciate that. So Scott Heathman, when Heinrich says a uh, super astute question. And then Jeremy says, great question. I would just take that clip and put it like on a loop on your social media and just, you know, call it a day. That, that's pretty good. Uh, Amy, you're up. Do we lose Amy? All right. We're